Jesus taught reincarnation and meditation. The more we read the Emerald Tabis, we realize readily that the connection between Thoth and Jesus is there. Where does the term matrix come from? The term matrix comes from the Bible. The flight into Egypt is a biblical event described in Matthew 2, 13 through 23. The Magi learned that King Herod intended to murder the infants within that area, and soon after, Joseph saw an angel in a dream which told him to flee to Egypt with Mary and his infant son, Jesus, also known as the accurate name, Yeshua. I'm using Jesus in the book because it relates to people's minds a little bit easier, but we know it's actually Yeshua. This is a very important statement here because we know that in Matthew, all of a sudden, Jesus disappears from the Gospels at the age of 12. Where does he go? We know that he goes to Egypt because the Bible says he did. And guess what we find in Egypt? We find that Jesus was actually there. Not only was he there, but we know that the house he lived in still stands. It's a shrine now in Coptic Cairo. This person, this entity really did exist in the physical form. It wasn't just some kind of thought thing. It wasn't that, no, it was real. This was a real person. For those of you who were wondering, this was a real person that existed with flesh and blood. He put on his pants one, one leg at a time, just like we did. Pretty interesting. Now, he was a virgin birth. How do we know about the time he spent in Egypt? Well, there's this book called The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. And I have these gospels as well. They're very little known, hard to find gospel. The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. What's interesting is these scriptures were omitted from the Bible. These verses, they were left out. It tells you of Jesus where he was and where he went when he disappeared from the biblical text at the age of 12 to 32. He went to Egypt to learn what? The Egyptian mysteries. From who? Who was the original creator of the mystery schools? Thoth, the Atlantean priest king. This could be why when you see as I go through this, his words are extremely similar to those words of Thoth written in what? In the Emerald Tablets, the same words that are recorded by him as him speaking in the New Testament of the Bible. Pretty interesting. He then leaves out of Egypt as he gets a little older and he goes up into Tibet. What does he go to Tibet to do? He goes to learn Reiki healing and Qigong healing with his hands and his body and energetic, how to move energy throughout the body, which is confirmed by the Dalai Lama. In modern times, the newest Dalai Lama has confirmed this. And then he heads down into India to learn the mystic arts and teaching reincarnation all the way back down into Egypt. Then at the age of 32, the Bible picks up again and says, I call my son out of Egypt. And then he turns up in Jer Jerusalem riding in the back of a donkey, right? Not everybody knows the story because not everybody is studied like they're supposed to. The Great Pyramid of Egypt has been and still is a temple of initiation into the mysteries. Gnostic texts such as the first Apocalypse of James, which you probably never heard of, were likely banned because of their different understanding of Jesus's importance. They understood Jesus much more in terms of being a revealer of human wisdom, explains Brent Landau, a religious studies lecturer at the University of Texas at Austin, who presented the findings at the Society of Biblical Literature annual meeting in Boston, November 2017. The first apocalypse of James manuscript is from the Nag Hammadi Library at Oxford University. These are the living quarters, the former living quarters of Jesus, a.k.a. Yeshua. These images and photos were taken by me on my own camera. Many believe the Emerald Tablets of Thoth <clears throat> are the source of material for the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. If you read the Apocrypha text, you will find out that Jesus was a student of the Egyptian mysteries and he taught reincarnation and meditation. Yes, Jesus taught reincarnation and meditation. You have to read the Apocrypha text. If you read the Apocrypha text, you'll find out that Jesus was a student of the Egyptian mysteries. He taught reincarnation and meditation. I know this to be true because on my last trip to Cairo, that's me. I visited the Coptic church where Jesus and his mother lived while there. They lived under the church in the basement. The Council of Nicaea in 325 AD omitted that information from the canonized Bible. I have included photos that I took in May 2014 of the living place of Jesus and his mother in Egypt, which you just saw those photos. It is still kept as a memorial until now. The biblical story of the birth of Jesus is about the sun and planetary alignments. The real person named Yeshua, aka Jesus, <clears throat> is actually Thoth or the son of Thoth. Jesus' grandmother, Mary's mother, is also a virgin birth. They didn't teach you that in Bible study, did they? <laughs> you discover this when you do deeper research. 
And so why would the mother of Mary be a virgin birth? It seems as if someone was establishing a particular bloodline. We know that bloodline to be the Merovingian bloodline, the bloodline of Christ. That bloodline is still walking that planet till this very day. And I'll get to that in a second. Now, when you take a woman and you insert an egg into her womb at the right time, it's called creating a zygote and then doing in vitro fertilization. You can then create a baby growing in that womb with no sexual intercourse. This is not the first time it's happened in ancient texts. Where there's an ancient text that goes even further back in Sumeria, where Isis takes an egg out of a woman, puts the egg, adds some genetic material to it, puts the egg in her own womb, takes it to term for 10 months and gives birth to Adamu, which means first man. In some cases they call him Adapa, but it's Adamu or Adapa, it doesn't matter. It both means first man. This is in vitro fertilization happening in ancient tablets. Why would they make this stuff up? if it didn't really happen. At that time, Isis created the first Adam, not the first human, there were already people here, according to the tablets. But the most perfected version of a homo sapiens sapien came out of her womb, which starts the generations of Isis, the Genesis, the Genesis. Many people believe that the Emerald Tablets of Thoth are the source material for the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. If you read the Apocrypha text, you will discover that Jesus was a student of the Egyptian mysteries and he taught reincarnation and meditation. And so when you go in here, it says, I have included photos, which I showed you before. There's more photos in the book. You can check it out on my book. But here's where it gets really important. In this chapter, I will establish a true source of the teachings of Jesus. It appears that most of his biblical teachings and statements come directly from the Emerald Tablets. This also points to the possibility that Jesus may be Thoth or the son of Thoth. Right here, you see this labyrinth. This image that you're looking at right here before I get into the text, this was discovered underneath the sands at Giza, where the Great Pyramid is located. The Lost Labyrinth of Egypt is without a doubt one of those incredible ancient sites that are a lost jewel in today's history. These are the Halls of Amenti located underneath the Great Pyramid. The same Halls of Amenti that Thope says in the Emerald Tablets that he built underneath the Great Pyramid. Well, they were discovered a few years ago. They're there. Thoth says, not as the little men of the present age did, the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from eon to eon did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally onward. Now, the halls of Amenti is a place where, according to Thoth, he would have these bodies inside of these rejuvenation chambers, and he would transfer his consciousness into new bodies so he can walk amongst men, but unlike a man. Jesus says in the New Testament, the book of John 7:38. He that believes in me, out of his being shall flow the river of living water. Halls of Amenti, where the river of life flows eternally. Same exact statement. It's the same exact statement. There's no difference there. Not one difference. A hundred times ten have I descended in the dark way that led to light. And as many times have I have ascended from the darkness into the light, my strength and power have been renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Kem shall know me no more. Understand here that the men of Kem refers to the people of Egypt because Kemet is ancient Egypt. Yet notice that we get our word alchemy from this Egyptian name. There are other interesting statements made by the writer Thoth. He says that he descended into the halls of Amenti where there are rege regeneration chambers. Certainly we can understand the concept of cellular regeneration. He says he has spent a total of 10,000 years because he says he's done it 100 times 10, regenerating his avatar over the course of many eons. Thoth also refers to the river of life, stating, I began this incarnation from eon to eon where the river of life flows eternally onward. Remember how Jesus makes the same reference in John 7:38. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, rivers of flowing, rivers of living water shall flow from within. The more we read the Emerald Tablets, we realize readily that the connection between Thoth and Jesus is there. I believe that this is very possible and they are one in the same. That's my own hypothesis. But in the time yet unborn, will I rise again? Thoth says, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Another interesting statement made by Thoth many thousands of years before Jesus tells his disciples that he will rise again. It's interesting that Jesus says the same thing in Mark 9:31. If ye have falsely betrayed my teaching, for one, for, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets to the men of the north, to the men of the south. Least my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely I will return again and require of thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time, from beyond death, will I return, rewarding or punishing as ye have requited your trust. 
in the biblical text of John 14, 20, Jesus says, Jesus declares to his followers, I go away and come again unto you. Tell no one the son of man be risen again. Now, here's the interesting. Jesus calls himself numerous times the son of man in the biblical text. What does Thoth call himself in the Emerald Tablets? He calls himself the son of Atlantis, and he also calls himself the son of man many, many times. Interesting. They both call themselves son of man. Thoth says, for surely I will come again, betray not my secrets. The Bible also teaches of a judgment day. Everyone, the still living and resurrected dead will face God's judgment. Even those who profess Christianity will find judgment through the deeds they have done in life. According to Matthew 7, 21 through 23 and Corinthians 5, 10, those who have lived righteous lives will be granted eternal life. Those who have lived evil lives will be condemned to eternal punishment. This record appears in several biblical, pack, biblical passages, including Matthew 5, 29 through 30, 25 through 31 through uh, 25, 31 through 46, and Mark 9, 43 through 48. Again, these statements are very reminiscent of the same thing stated by Thoth over 36,000 years ago. Did Jesus Christ, sometimes referred to as Yeshua, teach reincarnation? The answer is yes, he taught reincarnation. Additionally, reincarnation appears in the Old Testament. Read the last words of the Old Testament in the book of Malachi. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before coming of the great day of the dreadful, before coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Here God is speaking through Malachi. That's Malachi 4, 5 through 6. He was a famous prophet often quoted by great leaders throughout history, including U.S. presidents, Donald Trump and many others, and actually saying Elijah is going to come again. Now we find that Jesus making the same statement. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says, among them that are born of women, that there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, Matthew 11, 11. We're talking about a person who's coming, who's here, dies in some form or way, and then comes back again within the same time frame as a different person, still having the same attributes. We're talking about a form of reincarnation, or are they just changing bodies like Thoth says in the Emerald Tablets? Then he says, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come, Matthew eleven fourteen, meaning his coming was prophesied. Therefore, Jesus said he came, they did with him what they did, what they could, and so they will have to do me. And we're talking about the fact that this guy came and he and he, he came back again. And Jesus is saying the same thing is going to happen to me. I'm going to get killed and then I'm going to come back again. Are we just, we just going to keep coming? How are they coming back? What are they coming? How how are they doing this? Could it be some form of technology that we're not familiar with? Spiritual technology? Could it be that they are really using what both talked about in the Emerald Tablets? We know that Jesus was teaching reincarnation nonstop in the gospel of the Holy 12 and also in the biblical text when you really analyze what he's been saying. He's talking about coming back over and over again in the third dimension, in a body. Scriptures concerning the coming again of Elijah flow so prominently through the Bible that anyone can accept the fact that they appear within the context of an already established canon. If reincarnation is so important, why is it not taught in the West? Some religious leaders have attempted to control people using fear tactics by saying, you know, if you don't do what I tell you to do, you're going to go to hell, which we know is added to the Bible by the Catholic Church. I think the early church fathers feared that if people understood reincarnation, they wouldn't go to church, but would just have a hand at the father and say, well, I'll go into my next life. All right. People would be like, hey, you know, I, I messed up here. Let me, let me start fresh again. The Apostle Paul teaches the Corinthians. We know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, we're talking about the avatar body, right? That is when we die and leave this earthly body. We will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put our heavenly bodies on like new clothing. This is biblical text I'm reading. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. This is the Bible. We will not be spirits without bodies. We're talking about physical bodies. We're talking about physical form. People saying, oh, we're going to this place and it's going to be. No, you're coming back in a body, a physical body. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan 
It is not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. 2 Corinthians 5, 1. There's more teaching of reincarnation in the biblical text than anything. The idea that John uh, had been Elias, so John had been two different people within a certain period of time. <laughs> he, he was, one person died, he came back as another person. And that the prophets could relive again on earth is to be found in many passages of the New Testament, but is most notably quoted in Matthew 16, 13 through 17, Luke 9, 7 through 9, and Matthew 17, 10 through 13, if this is an erroneous belief, Jesus would have combated it and did not and, and did many others, as did many others. But from this, he gave complete sanction and authority by making it a basic principle of necessary condition by adding, no one may reach the kingdom of God if he is not born again in John 3, 3. Furthermore, insisting such when he added in John 3, 7, do not be surprised when I say it is necessary to be born again. Born again. Where does the term matrix come from? The term matrix comes from the Bible. That comes from the biblical text. Matter of fact, let me pull it up right quick. Exodus 13, 12. Thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast. The male shall be the Lord's. All right. Exodus 13, 15. Here goes another one. Uh, Exodus 13, uh, 34, 19. All that openeth the matrix is mine. Every firstling among thy cattle, whether ox or sheep, that is the male. Here's the interesting verse though. In Numbers 3, 12. And, and I behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix. Among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The matrix is all throughout the Bible. The Bible also says in, here, says in here that you must be born through the matrix because the matrix is a womb. What are we talking about? We're talking about being born again, which you've heard me talk about many, many times. You must be born again. And it ain't be becoming born again by praying to some exterior deity and begging him to forgive you of your sins. It comes through raising your level of consciousness to a higher level and realizing that you've grown consciously to another level and looking back on your previous level and saying, wow, I've been born again. And you'll be born again many, many times within this same lifetime, as I always say. Keeper of the great temple, link between the children of light. Now, thought me is actually E.I. Enki. That's his father. Thought me is the Sumerian god Enki. Also in John 12, 36, records the words of Jesus. Believe in the light that you might be the children of light. Why is he saying the same exact thing? from the Emerald Tablets. Slightly differently, but the same exact, meaning the same exact thing. It's because either Thoth is, Th uh, Jesus and Thoth are the same person, or Jesus is some way a bloodline, because we know of this, this virgin birth, like I said earlier, to establish a bloodline. Mary then gives a virgin birth. The grandmother gives a virgin birth, the grandmother was a virgin birth, then Mary comes, right? then Jesus is now a virgin birth. What is this bloodline being established and why? Is someone using the same technique that Isis used in the Sumerian tablets to create an, a, a bloodline so that Yeshua could come through that specific line? Is this an experimental way of coming back as a human being through the womb instead of becoming a fully formed grown man every time you, re you reincarnate? Because those claim to have the power to reincarnate at will. Did he utilize a particular technique to come through the womb of a woman, a human, and then regain all of his memories and grow up more potent and more powerful? Or was Jesus simply a student of Thoth the Atlantean priest king of his ancient mystery schools when he went to Egypt to learn the Egyptian mysteries, according to the Gospels of the Holy Twelve? It's a conundrum. It's either one or the two, because the Emerald Tablets is 36,000 years old, and then Jesus is saying all the stuff that's being said in here over and over again. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? That's my question. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.